Hey, a pleasure good day, everybody. This is Sports Center News. I'm Joe Borick, and this is going to be the latest NHL videos. We're going to be breaking down the Buffalo Sabres season, which I think was a wee bit better, at very least, than much projected coming into this season. That has been a heck of a bad out of hell season with a bunch of guys above 100 points and some most improved players on teams, including the Buffalo Sabres as well. So let's get right into it. Please continue to like and subscribe down below. Up above the easy to use widget at the end to keep us growing to 230 or more at the end of the month. Before we talk about the great performance of players by the Buffalo Sabres, let's give credit to Kevin Adams and company that have three first round picks in next year's or in this year's draft, I should say, and then two or three second round picks, excuse me, um, in the 2023 draft. So that's three first round picks in this year's three second round in the 2023 that they could trade up into a very deep draft or have a second round picks in one of the deepest drafts potentially in recent years and then this year's draft to me just from listening to different scouting sites and following all that different stuff uh val the catch site um all the different uh hockey prospect sites and all that um even elite prospects the prospect book uh, I don't think this draft is as barren as some GMs make it out to be. I think it's just laziness just because of the, that's just my opinion, but just because of the COVID pandemic, there hasn't been as much sight lines on guys. That is easier to say it's not as deep and then have all these surprise picks later than it is to say it is deep and then look like a moron when you don't get one of the good guys. You know what I'm saying? So it's all, but sometimes it's just about talking the lingo and talking the talk. Uh, and that's what I kind of see with this. But now let's get into the season of the players. Their most improved player, Jeff Skinner. We talked about it. Has he still been great defensively? No, but nobody expects Jeff Skinner to be great defensively. He has 33 goals, 29 assists, and 62 points to go across with Tage Thompson, which that line with Victor Olofsson seemed to be potentially coming into a pretty good thoroughbred line. 67 points for Tage Thompson, a good big boy that can knock guys off the puck. And if he has the potential to keep producing at that level, can definitely be a second C, if not a 1C, if uh, you have somebody, I would think Krebs, if he can, develops how they expect him to develop, would eventually switch with Skinner and move down uh, due to age and all that stuff as guys continue to develop. But there's definitely possibilities there. you got the local area boy, Alex Tuck, who performed fairly well after going there and will get more time next year. Middlestat still had his waves and tides. We'll see if he ends up staying on the Buffalo Sabres or gets his chances elsewhere, it might be best to kind of do one of those didn't work out for us, didn't work out, like didn't work out for us, I guess is the easiest way to say it, trades where the guy didn't work out for both sides and then just try to like swap with those. But Middlestat has shown some signs starting this year and he's still only 23 years of age and the great Yareev Wallach um, talks about that, one of the guys I podcast with and think is a very brilliant hockey mind. Um, that's still young, just because he got drafted in 17, whatever. Uh, I don't try to look at that over heavy anymore because certain guys just take longer and you see it multiple times uh, in the NHL where Vegas has multiple examples of that when Marshall Soul was sod with Florida but then started going off in his mid-20s with Vegas. Uh, Alex Tuck seems to be one of those guys that other than his one career year with Vegas is probably going to start going off in his mid-20s. If I remember correctly, a guy that started being a bounce-back player as well, Kyle Poso started going off he was good in his early 20s but started going ballistic for the Islanders in his mid to late 20s if I remember that career path correct so there's multitudes of examples Zygmunt Gregorzins hasn't been good at the NHL level until his mid to late 20s so there's multiple examples of guys and he was a former 14th pick in 2012 and now has just found his way as a um he's actually the perfect example as a just perfect 4C that can just kind of play a good, simplistic, don't-do-anything-stupid game most of the time. You got Cousins developing there with 37 points in 77 games. I think he's a guy that's going to be the 2C next year and jump to that level. Casey Middlestad, if he's on the team, will drop to 3C, and I think that's a more comfortable spot to let him develop. Krebs should stay on the second line. Tuck should be on the second line. Anders Bjork is somebody you could take or leave. You don't have to keep him. Zagurzins I would keep around as a good veteran that has developed well over time to just develop into a solid bottom sixer. Casey Fitzgerald, you could take or leave. He's kind of a 7th D. I love him uh, in the AHL level. Watching him as a good puck-moving defense in NHL level, not really there yet. Jacob Bryson did impress me this year, though. I thought he played well as a small guy. Will still try to lay on the body and knock guys off the puck, which picked 99th in 2017. Uh, average point one four points per game, but he's not really that type of defenseman, but he can pass the puck. 
Um, not the most offensive defenseman. That doesn't mean he's one of those guys that kind of flutters it off of his stick and loses it. Uh, he's a guy that's able to move it up, has solid skating speed. So I could see him being a guy that could actually stay on your bottom pairing where Fitzgerald right now looks like more of a guy that's a seventh defenseman and a very good AHL defenseman since he's already shown that at that level. Yokoharu's continued to develop well. Uh, he does have a minus eight, but that, Sabres fans know what factors that's because I think everybody would agree with me that he's still a pretty solid defenseman. And then Matthias Samuelson, the 32nd pick from 2018, might end up being one of the better defenders from the 2018 draft. Once it's all said and done, I know his stats don't look like the best on a page right now, but if you just watch him, he kind of reminds you of Anderson in um, L.A., who's literally underrated, Mikey Anderson, who's a very solid defenseman that can move the puck, can also play very good in his own zone, and doesn't shoot it, just n never throws a really aimless shot or net, isn't the best offensive defenseman. Samuelson uh, is a solid, is probably maybe a little bit better in the O zone, but like both of those guys are solid quarterbacks just because of their instinctiveness and smarts on the ice, and I think Samuelson is going to continue to grow. Darlene and him might end up being a good pairing because I don't think all Kings fans thought Anderson and Dowdy with the top line defenseman like Dowdy were going to be the perfect pairing, and Anderson was going to be the guy to slot in there. But that's what happened. I could see Darlene and Samuelson ended up working, and then if they don't work as the two lefties, I could see Power, honestly, is likely to eventually play first-line minutes, honestly. So you're probably going to see Power and Darlene potentially pay together and have that be the two lefties, and then you're going to have Samuelson and Yokoharu, who I think goes well together, and then you could have Bryson and whoever fits into there if they decide to keep Mark Pissick. Uh Will Butcher, I would say, is a guy that probably let go uh, just because he's been scratched a lot this year, probably let him go somewhere else. Colin Miller, you could decide to uh, keep there, and then he could be the guy you put there and hope he has a bounce-back year. He had a solid year this year, but not the Colin Miller you usually see, but I don't think he's by any stretch of the imagination close to being done on his career. I do think... He will bounce back at the age of 30, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with him. And then other than that, um, in the minors, they have uh, Oskari Laxanen, who could potentially play. Uh, Prowl and Davidson are just AHL veterans, uh, so you don't necessarily, you're not going to do anything with them. Philip Nyberg could potentially come over and you could give him a look. Um, you could give uh, Warg a look, potentially. Uh, but he's still 21, probably a little bit away. Nyberg's probably the closest to being ready. He's nothing ridiculous. He's picked 129 and 16 in the fifth round. He's nothing nuts. Uh, he's played in uh, overseas and has had a pretty solid year, more of a just well-rounded, doesn't do anything special, definitely not an offensive defensive, more of just a keeps it simple. You can plug in anywhere, kind of like how Linus Hogberg has looked in his first two games with the Flyers. You can just plug him in, and he's a guy that's not going to piss you off, knock the puck off a guy's sticks, make the pass up the ice, be able to get assists if guys are able to finish, but he's not going to be one of those guys that makes one of those like sexy Chris Letang passes often. But uh, he's a guy that could potentially be maybe that third-line defenseman that could pair because he is right-handed. Maybe you could end up getting a diamond in the rough guy out of him and have him be the third-line pairing defenseman with Jacob Ryson to go lefty-righty there. I'm not as... A pissy on the lefty righty thing anymore just because of the way the current age of the game's going with skill and just the way that guys match together chemistry wise feel who cares uh, if the lefty righty a lot of guys can play well on the offside some guys can't so I agree with the argument when you have guys that can't but um I think there's a lot of options here for the Sabres I think they're ahead of schedule that's why I would have to give their season a B plus honestly because I think this team is ahead of schedule and they're working out well for the future. I think Krebs is going to continue to grow. Middle stat, you can still swap for a guy that didn't work out for somebody else. If you want to do that, or you can try to keep him, let him be 3C, let Cousins be 2C, as I said, and see how that grows. And then Samuelson, I think, is going to continue to grow. Probably more as a second pair. You have power move up with Darlene, and you can probably have um, Samuelson then be with Yokoharu. And then you have Bryson that will probably be the favorite if they don't make any moves to make it out of the jump. And then Laxanen or the overseas kid, if they bring him in, uh, Philip Nyberg uh, is a guy that I could see potentially getting a chance out of camp um, to be with Bryson if they don't make that. Now, again, that's if they don't make other moves on defense. And the other thing we have to keep in mind, Devin Levi is now a member of the Buffalo Sabres organization on top of Lekkonen. 
And they also have Eric Portillo, who played like a freaking monster, the Swedish kid, 6'6". So sound in net for being that big as well. I asked him that question, and he talked about how it's just like preparation uh, before the games um, about how he's so ability to be so sound in net when I asked him that question at the NCAA regionals. And uh, he's a, a great goaltender prospect. Levi's a great goaltender prospect. And honestly, Lekanen had some injury history early in his career. This year, he actually did play pretty well in nine games and probably should have honestly saw a little bit more cage time. Uh, Hauser even played well in two games, but he's more of an AHL veteran, a good guy to have around a locker room in the AHL and be able to fill in for you at the NHL level like he did for a couple if needed. But good to see that he was able to play well. Lekanen, to me, is the guy that should be the favorite to start next year. Then you keep Anderson, you keep Tukarski around, you can keep Hauser if you want to in the minors. Uh, because Portillo... Um, I believe is, yeah, Portillo is staying with uh, the Mich Michigan next year. And then when it comes to uh, Devin Levi, uh, Devin Levi also still has not signed his ELC, and I don't think it's shown any signs of leaving Northeastern uh, after his first season where he played great and won the Richter Award, uh, deservingly so, with a 952 and a 154, like Jesus um, but anyway, let's wrap up this video as we're over 10 minutes. I go on rant sometimes. I apologize for that. But the Buffalo Sabres to me are moving in the right direction. I didn't even mention some other prospects I like, like um, Rosen as well, um, like Sard Sardarian as well. Um, so there's other guys there that I didn't even mention. So I think they're moving in the right direction. I think they're ahead of schedule. That's why I give them a B plus. I think Renato and Adams have done good things. They set them up well in the draft. Now you just got to hit on those draft picks and continue to have these guys show stepping stones in their play, rounding out the last two games of this season. Most teams have three. They have two remaining. And see how they play. Hopefully, potentially, they can play good games. And if you're Sabres fans that are worried on the percentages stuff, maybe they can lose for you guys but play very good. If you're not worried about that, get a couple wins because the percentages don't always play that big in the end where you see guys move up and all that yada yada. I understand now you can't go below four, but you still understand what I'm saying. Peace, everybody. Stay safe. Please do subscribe down below. Really appreciate your love and support this far.